So I was using this uh, iron-on transfer pan uh, yesterday for the first time and I had some experiments and I want to, to tell about my experiments uh, to you. So I did some mistakes as you can see and uh, yeah I have a lot of things to tell about this pan. So why I'm using this pen right now? Because I decided to use um, this uh, dark jeans fabric. It's not stretching, uh, just maybe just a little bit, and it's I think it's fine. And uh, I tried this fabric with my needle, and I feel it's comfortable to stitch on it. So I decided to stitch on combination of two fabrics. Uh, this is dark blue. It's for um, it's for dark a uh, dark night. As you can see, it's a night sand here. So um, this fabric will be for night. And this felt white felt is going to be uh, to display uh, snow. So I decided to com to use a combination of those two fabrics. And. I was thinking how I will be transferring my design on those fabrics and I usually use a light pad, this one, and um, it's not it's useless for those fabrics because I can see through this fabric and I can see also through felt enough so um, I was looking for other options and I was thinking about iron on transfer pan and there are other options like you can use um, cardboard, carbon uh, paper, I don't have it so, but uh, you can use a carbon paper and you also can use water erasable stabilizer. I have two types, it's magic paper from, from DMC. It's sticky, so you can print your design on magic paper and stick to your fabric and stitch on top of everything and then you will need to wash it away. Um, as I don't know how felt will behave when I will be washing it, it can make, it can become fluffy, so I decided to not wash it to not make it even bad. So um, there's other stabilizer which is not sticky and it's usually used for sewing. So uh, this is how it looks like. So you can transfer your design to this uh, stabilizer. Uh, you don't need any light pad or something like that. You can easily through see through it so um, you can do this way but I didn't want to make it wet so I decided to use iron on transfer pen so hi Nat this is Joe thank you Joanna um, so um, and you need to remember that the, it is permanent and it can be different colors uh, I have a black one, so um, I see that I can see the lines, so I can use it for a dark one. And yeah, that's it that you need to know, it's permanent and you need to iron on top of... I, I will show you how I transferred my paper pattern right now. So first I did an experiment. I I had a piece of felt which I don't need and I had a piece of paper. If you have a new pan, you never use it. So you will need to shake it a little bit. And you will also need to like push it few times. So uh, you will see the ink uh, appeared in your pan, so you will be able to draw it. So 
this flower was my first try. I did a pretty much uh, thick lines and next time and this is what the result was. It's too thick and too bright, I think. So I will I feel that I will not be able to color it with my stitches and it can be visible. So I decided to to draw like um, not pushing. Uh, I will I tried to make thin lines like this so it was working perfect. So in this case it's it's like a perfect way of using it. Try to make thin lines and don't overheat it because when you overheat it you will get strong bold lines even if you have a nice uh, lines thin lines like this this is my first try and I, I feel like I overheat it and the lines will become uh, strong and bold so I don't think I like it I like the second try. I didn't overheat too much, so I will be able to stitch on top of all the lines because it's permanent. I will not be able to wash it away or something like that. So I will be stitching on top of everything, so those lines will not be visible uh, um, as the final result. And I'm pretty satisfied with this one. So how I transferred my design? You need to remember that um, you will have a flipped image as a result. If you will uh, print the design, draw on top of the lines and then you will put it this way to the fabric and when you iron it you will have a flipped mm, side, like. So I was uh, drawing on the back side of my design. I printed my design and I was drawing on this side. I was using my light pad to see through and I was drawing from this side. And I cut it, then I cut it I did a mistake, this is my mistake, and I I just glue some piece of paper on top of it so it will not be transferred to my fabric. So if you need to be careful, because if you will do some mistakes, you will need to like fix it only by stitching on top of it. So this way, this is the only way you can hide. <laughs> your mistake so <laughs> or do what how I did I just fixed it with piece of paper on top of those uh, lines and it it wasn't transferred here oh, here it's, it's supposed to be here yeah so I cut it I put it on the fabric and also I you need to be careful uh, when you will be ironing, you need to know that your paper shouldn't move because if it will move a little bit slightly in some direction, um, it's going to be a mess with the lines here. <laughs> so um, do not move it. I use it this uh, sticky tape. This is a masking tape, just the usual one. And one more. Um, it when it when you go uh, with iron on top of this sticky tape, it can leave some glue on your fabric. So as a result, I have some glue on my fabric, but it is outside of my design. It is not going to be visible in the hoop. So it's even will work like. Um, stabilizer for my fabric it will stick to my hoop insides and it will keep my fabric tight so <laughs> it's okay i don't mind so i stick it this way 
and you also need to cover it with one more piece of clean one clean piece of fabric um, I was transferring uh, using a felt fabric it's acrylic one and you need to be careful uh, with your iron because if you will uh, be ironing on top of acrylic it will be burning and melting so you need something to cover it so you will not touch felt with your iron your iron should be hot and without steam and you will need to move your iron slowly keep it for a few seconds and slowly move it from the place to the place this way until you will cover everything and then still don't move it uh, to just to make sure that everything is fine you can uh, take a glance on the backside what's going on there and if everything is fine you can take it off so this is how I did it I transferred this design to this fabric I can use it multiple times so it can be used multiple times you can make uh, many uh, many pieces of fabric with this design with drawing on it only one time so it's a great if if you did a mistake like this I overheated and lines are too strong I just like try another one time and I'm pretty satisfied with this one so it's it will be working for me very well so what else if you have any questions just ask me I'm here and I will answer your questions so Okay, but um, with lines I'm pretty satisfied, it's, it's fine lines and the pen is working perfectly when I was drawing it and yeah I was talking already about clipped image what else Yeah, you can use, uh, um, I use it, first time I use a piece of fabric on top, like, first layer was um, felt, second layer was my design on it, and the last layer was fabric. But I would recommend you to not use any fabric because it, it will just be like, wasted you know um, if you don't have iron on pan but you have a laser printer this side was printed on white fabric so you can use a laser printer like iron on transfer you can print it and try to transfer with your iron to your fabric so there will be the it's the lines are not going to be perfect but it will leave those ghost lines that you can make it brighter with your uh, heating eraser and pan and stitch so we can work this way also you can put on top just regular baking paper and you can transfer your pattern to the baking paper also and this way you will not need any light pad because you will be easily see through the baking paper so I really like it this method it gives me perfect image every time and I can use it over and over and probably you can make kits using iron on paper uh, pan so 
it's pretty much fun and it opens for you um, a lot of uh, possibilities if you cannot transfer um, your pattern using your regular method you can try using this one if fabric is dark or thick so I pretty much like it if you have some questions you can ask me here so uh, this design this is for my uh, patreon stitching along and we are stitching um, new design every month and uh, this month we are going to be stitching this cozy cottage uh, what I will do with this next next I will cut it out because I want to use a combination of those two uh, fabrics and I also prepared a hoop and I binned it only half of inside hoop do you know why? <laughs> because um, I need this fabric on top it's going to be only one layer of fabric and on the bottom there are going to be two layers of fabric so I need this uh, part to see it tied in my hoop as well there is going to be no problem with this one but uh, there may be some like something wrong with this one so I decided to hoop to bend my hoop inside just for this fabric and so I use it my design there is a landscape where is going to be the line of fabrics between them so I mark, mark it with my pencil in, in inside hoop here and I mark it here so this part should be binded and I binded it I use it only just a regular I use just a regular fabric, I just cut it and made um, stripes and it's okay if it's fluffy, it's okay, totally okay. So I binded it and to fix it, to fix the last part, I just stitched it this way. So it's pretty much simple. So now I need to cut it. I left uh, a lot of space here because I need to hoop it. I need to have some about two inches uh, around my hoop left and I didn't need any sky uh, like like this because it's going to be on black fabric and I will cut it and it will also may create effect of some volume so objects on the front will look um, like pop from everything else let's see what's uh, and first I was going to la leave only uh, house and make a line here for a horizont then I was thinking maybe I will leave some felt around this naked tree so it will create uh, like effect of soft snow like that so I will probably make this like So I will do it, I'm using just a regular scissors, uh, it's bigger than smaller one, so uh, it's going to be comfortable to cut my fabric, and it's smaller than regular big, so it's going to be uh, possible to make some details and stitch it carefully like that so how you 
how do you think about this idea? I think it's going to look pretty. So if you want to stitch with us, you like it and you want to stitch it, all the videos are going to be available on Patreon. And link to my Patreon is on my video description. And I will also leave a link in the first comment. There are lots of uh, other different articles for beginners. So it's like a, my little embroidery school, <laughs> something like that. There are a lot of other things like videos and we have a private chat where we help each other exchange our tips and tricks and learn together and just having fun see it's going to be so fun i'm so excited <laughs> we supposed to be stitching this in November, but I got sick and it was COVID, so I was recovering for doing few weeks, so I had to move it for next month. So in places like this, you need to be careful and So that's why you need uh, needles, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> needles. That's why you need scissors, this sharp point, to be able to cut everything perfectly. So here is a, another negative so I will be making a snowball over it. Like that. Oh, I see some questions. Are you going to open new tiers in Patreon? Like you did with kids and stuff. Uh, regarding my kids, I stopped shipping and making new kits because of issues related to COVID I always have issues with finding threads um, I can't support kids when they are missing thread colors and I was replacing it and replacing to other colors but it wasn't working because um, it's like it confusing people, you know, when there are lots of different uh, colors which are doesn't correspond to the instructions and stuff like that. And uh, I felt over overwhelmed and uh, stressed because of it. So I decided to just stop making it for a while till uh, things back to normal because all those threads are coming from abroad and they just stuck stuck on customs and I don't have it on time so there are issues with that and also with shipping well, a lot of issues with shipping 
and I'm getting negative reviews because of uh, kids uh, didn't came on time and people leave negative reviews because of that so I just decided to stop making kids and I removed tears on Patreon as well related to the related to kids oh this is a landscape line here so I will cut it okay Right, I really like it. You know, I can't wait to start stitching it, so I will probably start stitching it right now. Um, no, I will stitch it tomorrow. <laughs> I will make one more live stream tomorrow, and then I will have one more day to stitch on Sunday. And then next live stream will be on Monday. So you will need to place your fabric right when it's supposed to be to match this here. So, uh, you know, in this case, if I decided now <laughs> to have all most of the objects on the felt so I wouldn't need it uh, like I wouldn't need to transfer it to the dark fabric but you know uh, because uh, first I wanted to stitch to have only house and landscape bottom side on felt but then I decided to go with um, most of all objects so but it's okay. So now my my so now I need to place it in the hoop and I need to make it like sit perfectly like this way. Let's try it. You know, I'm thinking maybe I should just fix those two fabrics with like some pins or needles so it's not going to be moving. Let's try probably. So I need the center. Like this. Let's, let's go with only that. Let's try. So I will hoop it first and then I will cut all the fabric that I don't need. So it's going to be comfortable to stitch. So I need to make sure that this uh, part of hoop stays on top part like that okay so looks looks great <laughs> Oh, see, it's moved down. You need to be careful. So I will like place my hoop on the bottom first because it's felt here and then I will do it on the sides and on the top. Yeah, it's a good idea to fix your 
felt with your fabric, bottom fabric, with some needles or, or pins. That was a good idea. I have some sticky, some glue, some sticky tape here. So it can become dirty when I will be stitching it. I will try to remove it with some wet, some wet t-shirts. Let's try. But it probably will not work and it will make the felt to be fluffy. Okay, if it's not going to be working, so maybe I will be stitching on top of it. So that was my mistake with some glue. To fix it, probably you will need to cut your design a little bit further, like one centimeter or more, and then if something will be sticking outside, it's not going to be critical. Yeah. So let's make the fabric tight. See? You probably don't need to transfer everything to your bottom fabric because when I make it tight, um, bottom fabric is stretching a little bit, but so the image is moving, see, and it's become a little bit visible under the felt, but I will try to fix it, I can move felt, and I will be stitching on top of those lines. But it's not really critical, I see that I'm going to be doing fine. So, I think that it's a little bit drum tight already. I will double check everything on the bottom. Like that. Yeah, you need to be fixing not only here, there should be one needle here and one needle here, so it's not going to be moving anywhere and it's going to be perfect. Mm, yeah, now I can cut everything which I don't need. So I'm gonna use just a regular big Scissors. And I'm leaving about one, two inches outside of the hoop. I know that I'm going to be framing it in the hoop, so I do it right away before stitching. If you are going to be making a pillow from it or something like that, so you <laughs> might not want to cut it, you maybe have some square frames for stitching, so better use those. Here we go. So now it's ready. <laughs> I really can't wait to start stitching it. I will be using uh, variated threads for those uh, trees. I have two skeins of variated threads and the dark one. This is Seasons Cosmo. And it's also 
cost more. I will, I can make a combination of those two colors. So I can thread one thread from here and one thread from here. And it can create like a color variation. It's going to be pretty much interesting because this one is too dark and this one will bring us some light storks. So I think it's going to be fun. You will also need a DNC needle probably. I love them because I think they are the best for embroidery. It's three nine uh, sizes and I'm going to be using number probably number three or four for one two strands and bigger sizes for for cases when I, I will be using three strands or more and you will probably need some cute scissors and what else all the colors which I'm going to be using I will post in the article on Patreon. So today I'm going to be choosing colors and I will be posting all other instructions uh, as I go as well. All the instructions are going to be available on Patreon so you can join for $10 tiers, tier and you will be you will have access to everything that I have on Patreons. Instructions for this pattern and all the rest. Articles, videos and I have a lot of free patterns um, for beginners available on Patreon. There are about 10 patterns and there are also sketches. I sometimes draw something that I want to stitch. If I have done no time to stitch it, I just post those sketches on Patreon and somebody who has time just stitch it and I see some results and it's fun. So there are a lot of sketches as well and there are video updates from me, there are some behind the scenes and yeah, a lot of fun on Patreon. It's not only just this pattern, there are a lot of more interesting content, content there. So, see you on my next video. Tomorrow I will shadow a live stream and post a link on Patreon as, as usually. Thank you so much for joining me today. I uh, hope you are having a good weekend, a great weekend and see you tomorrow. Bye guys!